So the first thing is, we're gonna be using our pinky a lot all throughout this piece. And that's good because it forces us to strengthen our pinkies. And a lot of times, all guitar players, as I've mentioned before, it, it's the weak forgotten finger in the left hand. There's just not a lot of times that we really need to use it. Certainly if we're used to playing more kind of standard lead guitar approaches, blues rock guitar approaches, things where we're bending strings and stuff, that so much goes on with the first three fingers of the left hand. But when you get into the solo guitar realm, the pinky cannot be overlooked and uh, there's just so much being covered all at the same time that you need all the resources available to you as you're, as you're playing the guitar. So you're gonna begin with the pinky on the fourth fret of the second string. It's the E flat note, that will be the minor third of the key we're in, and tune is in the key of C. And uh, start on the E flat, and then you're going to go into the major third, which is the, just the open E string. So E flat into E, and we're gonna start on the end of three. I wanna break this down both in terms of the notes themselves and in terms of the rhythm and the groove. Chet was always the king of the groove. So anytime you're learning this stuff, don't just take it from one person who came after. Always go back and listen to the source material because there was nobody else that that had a deeper, better groove in, in, all of, in all of the history of the guitar. I mean, there could never be a better groove than Chet's. So, Always go back, listen to how he was phrasing things, and uh, and sort of just the whole feel that he was getting with his guitar. And it does begin on the end of three, so the melody is. So the notes being fourth fret of the second string, open E string, and you're repeating that again. And then you're going to the first fret of the second string, C. A, A flat, G. Okay, I know I'm breaking this down like to its smallest component parts, but that's the approach I advocate most. Even if we've been playing a really long time, and I've been playing 25 years this year, I still, when I learn something for the first time, it helps me in order to think of it in its most elementary building blocks. If you can get that into your brain, it will never leave your brain after that. So, um, that's the melody, and underneath that, his thumb picking pattern is he's just going fifth string, fourth string, sixth string. So, followed by the fourth string again. That's correct. I, I don't even think about this sometimes, so I had to, I had to stop and, and analyze that for a second. But yes, it's fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. So, and that's all out of a C chord shape and as is ever the case with Chet, you'll notice you, in order to get the fifth string and the sixth string, you need to be able to use your third finger to cover both notes. And you're not grabbing them at the same time, it's not a block chord where you, where you need that happening, but in articulating each, each note separately, you're still going to be sort of just rocking back and forth on the tip of the finger or however it works best with your hands to use your third finger to cover both the fifth and the and the sixth strings. And I've also been, you know, showing others things and, and teaching for quite some time. So I've seen a lot of different kinds of hands and different kinds of fingers, and we all have a different, just just different hands altogether. You know, really, some of us do deal with short, stubby fingers, and some have very long, narrow fingers, and and we fall into this this line of thinking quite frequently that. If we can't do something, maybe our hands just aren't up to, ta to the task. But there is kind of all, always a way of, of working around that, and it's easier done working one-on-one -on -one to you know position hands and, and sort of look at exactly what you're getting out of the guitar. But in order to get those two notes together, I pretty much situate my finger. I I just sandwich it. So sort of I don't know if you can see this with the camera, but sort of more of the underside of the third finger is grabbing the fifth, the fifth string, and then it's just the tip, just, you know, almost to the fingernail, but not quite on the fingernail, that's grabbing the sixth string. And if I just keep my hand there, I can cover both at the same time. I could let them ring through if I wanted. 
-hmm. I'd be opening myself up to be able to do block chords that way. You know, if I wanted to, you know, do like a, uh, well, let me think of even a chord I might do like that. Uh, you know, like a, if I did, well, if I just even wanted to play a C like that. And then let's say put the fifth on top. I would need to do that because I, I, I'm, I'm attempting to play five notes with four fingers, right? And, and I'm articulating that in the left hand like that. So it's the same principle, it's just that you don't have to do a whole block chord, you're, you're alternating back and forth. So you can either leave it planted there, you can just kind of rock the, rock the third finger back and forth. A lot of times on beat two and four throughout all of Chet's kind of thumb picking things, you would oftentimes, not on every two and four, but you will hear that it's not always completely scientific and, and one isolated note at a time. A lot of time, a lot of times on two and four, he's strumming through with the thumb pick to the next adjacent string. In this case, it's the third string. It's not really ringing like a very super obvious. It's not that. But it's a little bit, of course, you got the, the right hand is muting the bass. And occasionally you'll hear, when you slow that stuff down and you really dial in to what Chet was doing, you'll hear often that he was strumming through to the next string. So that's also part of just developing the feel and the groove and, and mimicking what he was doing so brilliantly. So when you combine the melody with the bass, that's, you're going to begin it on the end of three and you'll count it. Like one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Then we're into the next part of the melody. So we have. And in the right hand, I'm just gonna tell you right now on the right hand, you gotta be very sophisticated and delicate to be able to just get all those notes in between your thumb picking pattern. I'm doing things, I'm not really using my a, a proper classical technique or using all three fingers in my right hand. I'm doing that mostly grabbing the melody with my index and my middle finger as my thumb is just thumping through and I'm thinking right there and, and, and I will also mention that. Try not to think. When you think, bad things happen. Um, just do things as slowly as you can to not have to think about it. Uh, yes, when I'm using my thumb, yeah. My index finger is literally just kind of raking down from the second string to the third string on that part of the melody. So it's there. If you could see a close up of my right hand, you would see that my index is just sort of grabbing the C and then going to the next string, grabbing the, the, the A at the second fret of the third string. A lot of index finger and, and a little bit of middle finger. So you repeat that twice. You play it a, a total of two times. And then you're on to the next part of the melody, which begins with the high E string open, goes to the F natural. The chord we're going to be holding down is a G7, and a very standard kind of G7, the same G7 you'd see like in any kind of beginning guitar method. Um, these are all pretty simple chords, but what he's playing against them is so great and has such a great groove that it's, it's completely brilliant. So, there's your melody. I, I believe that, let me make sure, I'll let's play that in context, make sure I gave, gave you all the notes in the melody. That's it. Okay, so the first time, you're using the pinky to grab the third fret of the second string. 
it's only the second time that, that the melody goes higher. Okay, that's that's correct. So check this out. Okay, so to get that, again, you want your G7 shape, and it's very important to have your second finger here on the fifth string. A lot of times when we play G or G7 chords, especially just bashing out like Beatle tunes or playing rhythm guitar things, we're inclined to kind of ignore the second finger on the fifth string. Although in all the beginning guitar methods, you'll see play a G chord like that and play a G7 like that. We grow up and, and we sooner or later realize most of the time, by the way, that would be the third of the chord, uh, that would be the B note, the, that's the third of, of the G scale. We grow up and we realize, well, we have a B right there on the open second string. Why do, why do I need to hold down that other finger? And we just start muting the fifth string and we don't pay attention to it. We don't, we don't need the extra stress on our hands or whatever. But in playing stuff like this, you're playing alternating bass, having some variation in the bass, it's a big deal. If you just thump through on two strings, it's not going to sound like Chet. So here you definitely want to have the second finger on the second fret of the fifth string and your ba bass pattern this time is going to be, it's going to be in, in strings, it's going to be six, four, five, four. And then all the work on top of that is just going to be in the melody on your left hand and in your right hand. So, as is, again, often the case with Chet, it's heavily syncopated. It's uh, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. And then we're back into the original, the, you know, we're going to repeat. We're going to repeat the first phrase of... of the A section, essentially. So you're going to combine those. And I know you can hear it, but just to, just to make this really detailed, you do want to hammer in from the open E string to the first fret. So that's definitely in, in the left hand. You're just going to articulate the open E string and then use your left finger, your, your index finger, to hammer on. And one of my favorite things about the guitar, about playing the guitar, about teaching the guitar, about thinking about the guitar, is in everything you play, there could be um, almost an endless amount of things that you could design a course of study and practice around. So, in this case, like just take an isolated incident of doing a hammer-on. You want to make sure when you're doing your hammer-ons that the attack is not really any louder or more intense than the note that you're hammering onto. This is part of developing a strong left hand and just having a nice touch on the guitar. If, if you attack the open string and then by the time you press down with the left, it's petered out and it's just kind of barely there. It doesn't sound right, it doesn't feel right, it sort of translates to a weird sound for the listener. But when you attack the open string and you hammer on with a nice attack that, that matches the intensity and the volume, then it's, it's a color rather than a change in the volume of the actual note. And you can practice that up and down the neck with as many, you know, I mean, I, I still practice hammering on and pulling off quite frequently. You know, Hendrix did that, again, to me, so much of the guitar. Nothing is isolated on the guitar, to me, like, Genres don't even exist. Principles go across anything you might play, anybody you ever listened to that, that inspired you. So all these techniques you can translate to anything on the guitar that, you, that you're working on. Even if you feel like things are disconnected, nothing is dis disconnected on the instrument. So going back to... Okay, so you're holding down with the pinky again. And you still have the G shape in your bass, so 
you know, your hand is kind of like in a diagonal like that. Uh, more than a diagonal, it's kind of like in a, in a very weird triangular shape stretched across like strings six, five, and, and two. And then you're going back to the C. And you're going to repeat that again. Nothing different when you repeat that the second time. And then you're going to go to the G7 again. Same thing again, but the last bar of that he phrases a little differently. So that is the open E string. And I'm, I'm, I'm using things differently. I'm, I'm bringing my thumb pick down just to play the melody when I'm not. When I'm not using it for the bass, so let me I'll play that exactly how I would if I had the thumb pattern going. Um, but I'll be phrasing it and four and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. I'm always feeling where the groove is at, and uh, even just listening to music when there's not a guitar in my hand, especially if you are still kind of in, in the process of internalizing rhythm and, and haven't been playing hours every day for decades on end that can be a really powerful tool is to just you know listen to music and when you're listening to music just tap your foot and count out loud along most popular and rock music and really most music in general you know whether it's from the first part of the 20th century or anything current most music more often than not, is in 4-4, four, four, and occasionally we get a good waltz. So, uh, you know, Johnson Rag is in 4-4, four, four, just like so many other pieces of music, whether you're listening to the Beatles or, or Chet Atkins, you can always feel where the groove is at. So, you're starting that on the end of 3, and then the, using on uh, the, the first, first finger, yeah, gra grabbing the F note on, on beat 1, on the, on the downbeat. So, and, or, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. And you see in my left hand exactly what I'm doing. I'm just open string, index finger, again, to the pinky. So my whole melody, I'm playing, that's why I mentioned the pinky at the beginning of this. I'm playing with the melody is my first finger and my pinky. Because I need the third finger and the second finger to hold down my bass pattern. And sometimes I might phrase that on, on beat four leading into it instead of the end of three, possibly. Four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. You know, I, I might, you know, just depending on how I'm feeling it, you know, in the particular moment, and, you know, we'd have to go back and exactly break down what Chet did to, to tell you exactly. You can hear for yourself. Go listen to Hi-Fi and Focus. It's a brilliant record. But that is the uh, first A section. back to the C chord after that. That's that's the whole thing. So All right, so you hear at the end of the Atkins Travis, Travis Traveling Show, mistakes and all. Uh, but, uh, yes, just I'll, I'll clean that up a little bit as I show it to you. So the bridge, it's going to begin on, it's a dominant seventh chord, so it begins on C9, and then it alternates with the melody to C7. Again, you're going to see in the bass what's happening with my middle finger. It's covering both the sixth string and the fifth string. So, right? Right, when I slow it down, it's so weird. But uh, there's not really room for your thumb to be, 
Chet used his thumb a lot, but in that particular sort of a, of a motion where you're having to rearrange your left hand on every beat, it's got to all happen in the, in the left hand fingers, and, and the thumb is not really, it's not advantageous. It just cramps things to try to introduce the thumb into taking care of the sixth string there. So you definitely want the middle finger covering both the uh, fifth and sixth strings there. So it's all on the beat. It's one, two, three, four, and then here, one and two and three and four. While well, I just wrap my thumb around, look at that, because I'm slowing it down and I'm, I'm giving you all these different possibilities, some of which I do not recommend. See, that's how I'm doing it. My, my second finger is literally going from the third fret of the sixth string to the second fret of the fourth string. It's just doing this diagonal motion over in, in the span of one beat. Because a beat can be a, a fair amount of time when you know, you've got a full beat to move your finger a relatively short distance. So. Right, exactly. So by, by the last part of that phrase, I don't have to worry about these strings being held down by anything because the bass has already been played. So again, your pattern is going to be pretty much through the whole tune. It's going to be strings 5, 4, 6, 4, 5, 4, 6, 4. And what's changing is in the left hand. Uh, so... I hit the open six string. See, that'd be like a cool little inversion. That's not what Chet played. I guess you could do that. Well, I played it the way Chet played it right now, just on autopilot, because that's the way it's been drilled into my brain. Uh, I was saying, I was going to say that you could do that because you're going to go up to the F chord, so that'd give it some, some nice tension. But let's stick right now with, with the way that it is on Hi-Fi and Focus on the record. So, okay. Again, you'll see my melody is all in my pinky and first finger. Everything else is the chords that are moving. Uh, I've got, you know, my, my C7 shape here. Second finger, first finger, third finger. Third finger being on, on the third fret of the, of the third string. That's the dominant seventh of the C. That's the B flat note. Because that right there, that tritone is going to be common whether you're playing C9 or C7. So, and from there, you're going to go to the F chord. Kind of a cool thing Chet does in the bass there. So, instead of just keeping it, that's cool, but he goes, I think, uh, right, so on the first time through the F chord, he grabs the open A string, on beat three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So that just gives it a little bit more something special. And that also, in the melody, which is one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Um, if you were to line those up, yeah, that gives you the third of the chord against the sixth of the chord, which is kind of a nice sound. Otherwise, if he had not, if he if he did something something else, something different than that, what he probably would have gotten would have been he would have gotten the fifth of the chord against the uh, sixth of the chord, which is cool. I mean, you're not really going to stop and notice this in the moment, but what getting the third in there does it is is it just gives it that nice sort of solid major tonality and. Uh, Also gives you just like a nice, a really nice note that you're going through as your bass climbs. So you could think of the bass climbing like that. And uh, 
how much of this was he really thinking about? I, I doubt, I doubt any of it, but, but how much was he feeling this and, and in, intrinsically kind of just had a great music sense and, and was somewhat just aware of all these things, you know, under the sur surface, I'm, I'm sure he was aware of, of all of it. He would just would have been feeling, you know, the great, the great sense of arrangement and, and musicality that he always had from day one. So here we are. And I hammer on when I play that because I don't want the, the, the open first string ringing through. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. You could just leave it like that, but I tend to hammer on. So by the end of that shape, I have a true F6. And yeah, very much so with the thumb on the sixth string on that one. And I don't go to really have you hear the the F note up high on the first fret of the of the first string because I don't want to change the melody. But I'm just saying my left hand goes for that. So if anything is still ringing through or you hear any other notes on top, I just like having the root there. going on here is he's going F and really F6 to D7 and it's actually technically a D9 because he's got the open E string on there which the the E note is the the ninth of the chord so it's just uh it's like you took a C7 out of a introductory guitar book like the standard C7 shape and you just moved it up two frets and there's your D7 chord. Take that same shape, strung through the whole thing, and you got a D9. So, it's all out of, the, out of the block chord shape. You don't have to mess with a whole lot of left hand variation at that part in the tune. So, one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, four. That's how I'm phrasing it right now, at least. Again, third finger grabbing the fifth string and the sixth string. I, I'm going to get tired of saying that over and over again, but I really want that to be solid in, in your brain that that's a big part of being able to get these nice bass patterns. So you got to make maximum use of your left hand, and Chet was just a, always economy of motion. You watch his hands. He's doing the most complicated, beautiful-sounding things, but sometimes it looks like his hands are barely even moving, and that's really important for making it sound effortless you know you don't need to work any harder than you already have to in order to get the concept and the sound across so from there you're going to go into this cool little descending pattern and if you have a bigsby on your guitar you definitely want to sort of depress the arm and then scoop up on the first beat it's because you're going to be doing a g triad at the seventh fret and i'm using fingers uh second finger pinky third finger i'm doing it that way because of what's going to be coming up in a moment okay so you just it's g triad to g flat triad to f and this is why i was mentioning you want your first finger free you'd be in trouble if you did the triad like that like the standard if you did it like a d chord shape just moved up you wouldn't be well prepared for what's about to happen. You're gonna be going. And then you want to bar with your first finger at the third fret. It's gonna be really a, a G13 chord is what it is. So you're gonna be using your, your first finger to bar the first four strings. And uh, then you got your middle finger at the fourth fret. And I'm using my pinky at the fifth fret. And I'm just. It's like G13 back to F6. You're not sliding the whole bar down because that would be a very different sound. That would give, and it's, it's not that. It is certainly not that. But you're getting certainly the bar on the G chord to give it a nice dominant seventh of flavor, which is a good thing when you're playing in the key of C to give the five chord a, a dominant seventh flavor. And then you're 
sliding the top three notes down. So if I were to play that in context, you'll have a... So I'll play you the whole bridge right now. Uh, and then we're going to go back into the A section. Just repeat the A section again, and I'll show you that. So last A section, you'll be leading into it again from... So there's a little variation there, a couple little variations. You'll see he using, he's using the pinky to pull off from the third fret to the open E string. And as with the hammer on, you want to make sure when you're pulling off that the attack is not any, any greater intensity than the note that you're pulling off to. You want everything to be even. Again, you don't want it to like peter out like, you don't want, you don't want that. A trick that I'll often use when I'm when I'm doing pull-offs is to just re-articulate the note kind of with the angle at which I pull off in the left hand. So although I, I have the right hand that, that attacks the initial note, in this case the G, the, the third fret of the, of the first string, when I, I have that note ringing and then I pull off, I'm, I'm in this case my pinky, I'm releasing it from the neck at such an angle that it kind of it re-attacks the string. It's almost like I'm like I'm picking it with my left finger almost. My my left hand my my yeah, my left hand pinky. So Next variation you just saw, he goes through a different chord on this last A section than he did on the first couple go rounds. On the first couple which you already saw and and this will make it, it should sound familiar now. You know, the melody is that, and he, he just stays within, within the C chord. So, so that whole descending pattern, you're just holding down the home, the home chord. But the last time through, so he's doing this variation. Okay, so the melody is already fairly different, but um, there's no descent on the A through the A flat to the open G. It doesn't, it's just and four and one, two, three, and four and one, two, and. So it's, you're hitting the second fret of the third string, but then you're going back up to the first fret of the second string. So the trail end of that melody is that instead of Okay, those are the two, the, the two, if you were to like put them side by side and go this versus that, it would be versus. So when he's doing this, that's a perfect opportunity for him to go through the F chord to give it a little bit more harmonic variation, which he does. So he goes. I think I just phrased that now when I played it on autopilot a little bit differently than I showed you slowed down, but. You'll, you'll, you'll figure out what the best feel is when you're playing this, and you can always listen to Chet and match his phrasing exactly. So... So he does that twice. I mean, he keeps that variation intact. So the last A section, he's not... He's not doing that at all. He's doing the... So... Another variation in the melody. So he's letting the first string ring against the open second, and then putting his second finger in the second fret of the third string. That's the ninth of the chord. Although yes, that, that is the ninth of the chord. I was gonna I was gonna never mind. I was gonna say there was no dominant seventh in that chord, but that's that's not the case. The, the dominant seventh is this F note. So you got a G9 chord here. You just don't, you know, you, you have the open four string, so your bass pattern is, yeah. Your bass pattern. You'll also
also notice because he's using first finger, second finger, pinky. All that's available here is the third finger to hold down the bass. There physically are not fingers in the left hand to create a situation where you could have that and that. The uh, so so your bass pattern is simplified. It's uh, it's low G, third fret, sixth string to open D string. I mean, I guess he could have done that and wrapped his thumb around, but you try to do that. That'll be it'll put your hand in probably a fairly awkward position as far as just the angle it's at and. Because you got the you'd be stretching between your thumb here and your index at the first fret, so again, economy of motion, you know, look for the the simplest way to get a good sound and a good groove. So, so, so anyhow, that that that's what's going on there. So, so let me play that for you in context. Uh, The second half of that G7 shape is it's just the same as it was the first time. And you will notice that he does add in the the B note on the A string, the B note, the second fret of the fifth string. Once his second finger is freed up, and his second finger is freed up after that first phrase. So it begins with that variation. occupies his second finger but when he goes to the next phrase still with the G7 harmony your your second finger can move down to the fifth string to grab that bass note so your bass pattern really becomes in order from the beginning through the end just of that phrase um, so on the back half you get to add in that nice third in the bass again. So that's the first AABA section, and then he goes into his variations. 